to Martin, who is a free and open source software developer advocate from the Debian developer community, currently president of software in the public interest. Um, Martin was elected the Debian project lead in 2003. Uh, so people often speak about the open source community, but there's actually many different communities and many different configurations of this, and they differ greatly in many different ways. So Martin will take us into the journey of these communities and what it means to be supporting them. Can we change? Okay, over, you. over to you, Martin. Um, hi, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Martin Mikkelmeyer. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. It's my first Force Asia, and I've, I've actually wanted to come for, for, for many years. Um, and I just briefly wanted to talk about open source community. Um, and, and before I forget, I will talk about the same topic on Sunday in more detail. Um, so open source obviously has achieved, you know, many things. Um, we, we have so many, so many software out there and so many companies participating nowadays, it's been a huge success um, from, a you know, from a point of view of the technology, but also in terms of the community, how, how we do things, how we produce the software. I think it's amazing how people all, the world, all around the world collaborate together to produce this software. Um, so one of the things I've noticed is that a lot of people talk about the open source community as if, as if there was only one community and it, and it worked the same way. But actually there are, there are so many different communities, there are really thousands of different communities. And if you actually look at them in detail, you will see that they work in very different ways. And if you want to become involved in open source, you need to learn those differences. You need to, to understand um, you know how how the project works and some of those differences are in terms of technologies but some of them are also in terms of the the social norms um, so for example if you look at open source um, they differ in, in a number of ways in, a, in technologies um, you know the different programming languages um, the infrastructure is different um, you know what kind of bug tracking system do they use um, you know, how do they store the, the, the source code, stuff like this. I mean, to be honest, because of GitHub, things are getting much more, like, ho harmonized. Like, a, a lot of projects are using the same processes. Um, but especially the large open source projects, they, they have their own project infrastructure and do things in a different ways. The processes are also quite different. How do you submit patches? How do things get approved? Uh, the governance of the project uh, is, is vastly different where some projects have, uh, you know, several committers um, and other projects have like, uh, uh, you know, one main guy um, who makes the final decision. The philosophy of the project can, can, can vary quite a bit. And for example, you can see that in terms of licensing, where you have the permissive people on one hand who basically say, well, open source free software, it means you can do whatever you want, even if that means closing the software down. Um, and then, on the other hand, you have the like the copyleft people who basically say, "Well, freedom means that the, the freedom needs to be preserved for everyone, so you can't you can't close it down." And and these are different philosophies we see, and and the philosophy it doesn't just impact the license, but also how how people do things, how people you know govern the project, how they lead stuff, and then the culture um, can can really vary as well. Um, so I'm involved in, in the Debian project, and uh, Debian has produced uh, uh, you know a lot of great software, and I, I could give you a lot of facts you know, about how many how many software packages we have, how many architectures we support, uh, a, a lot of those technical details. But really, when I think of Debian, uh, I, I really think of something like this: you know, the community. This is what it's all about, and this shows people uh, like where the Debian developers can be found. So we have a lot of people in Europe. Uh, we have quite a few people in 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 in, in the U.S. or America. Um, and then we have a few people in Asia, but really we need we need more people in Asia. Um, and here is another uh, photo from the the Debian conference. Uh, so we have a, a a conference every year, uh, and this this was in Edinburgh. And this is really what Debian is about. Like it's the people, 
and and I've been involved in, in like for like 20 years, and some of those people I've known for for that time. You know, I remember when we were students. Um, when we went to a conference, we would sleep on, on the floor, we would take the bus, and then a few years later, we would suddenly have jobs, and we would like, oh, you know, let's share a taxi, who's gonna pay? Well, you know, either Red Hat or HP, like, who cares? <laughs> um, so thing, things, and people, people get older, right? I, I used to look quite different. Um, <laughs> and, and I think the whole, and this is why conferences like these are so important, is because at the end of the day, it's all about the people, the community. Um, but one thing you have to realize is community has different etiquettes, it has norms, it has rituals, and it also has history. And you need to be aware of those things in order to be able to, to, to contribute in an active, effective manner. Um, uh, one of the things is that is the violating community norms is 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 really bad. So when someone is new to free software and open source, and they they are very excited, they want to contribute, um, and they come to the project, but then they do something which uh, which the project find, finds weird because that's not the way we do things. And actually, one thing that's very strange uh, is that we humans. When I meet someone at a conference, I would go up and say, hey, I'm Martin, and, and I would shake uh, the hand or something. But the thing is, in open source projects on, on the internet, we actually don't do that. Um, when actually someone sends an email to a mailing list introducing himself, saying, hey, I'm Martin, I want to contribute to this project. If I read an email like this, I'm, it's like weird. That's not how we do things. You contribute not by introducing yourself, but like sending a patch or a bug report saying, hey, this is broken. Um, you know, you can improve it in this way, and here is a patch. Um, so these are things that if you're new to open source, you need to learn how, how to do things. So, so in order to be an effective contributor, just knowing the technology isn't enough. You need to, to learn about those social norms. Uh, um, but the, the thing is that open source is, is a lot of fun. Um, I mean, uh, you have the opportunity to work with really smart people all around the world. I mean, if you work for a company, they might have some smart people, but no single company has, has you know, all the smart people in the world. But with open source, you can work with, with all those people, even if they're competitors, you can work with them, and open source attracts some of the, the smartest people out there. You can make friends all over the world. Um, so when I travel, usually I can meet people, I have you know, invitations to stay with people. It's, it's just so much fun. And you also learn about different cultures. Um, and, and actually, I, I also see that a lot of people, they, they come because of the technology, but then they stay because of the community, because that's who their friends are. And, and, and it, it gives them a sense of belonging. It gives them a, a sense of accomplishment and, and of, of, of being part of a, tri a tribe. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say. And um, on Sunday, I'm giving a talk going into some of the more details about how, how to do things or things to look out for. Thank you.